I have to show you this video. This video is out of this world. Yeah. So I think the name, of, the name of the outlet is The Recount that put this together. There's been a lot of these local uh, meetings. School, and I don't know if these are school board meetings or they're just local government meetings yeah. or whatever they are. Might but be a mix. Pe people can come and they can, you know, give their two cents on what's going on in the world. And uh, obviously... COVID is on the top of everybody's mind, and so these hearings are largely about COVID. And, man, you are getting some real gems of people showing up and showing their nutsack to the world. Take a look at this video. You want to wear snot on your face all day? Fine, you do you, boo, but don't force that non-science, satanic BS on our kids. The wind that is blowing through the black people, through the white people, through the Chinese people, they are blowing through your veins. These are demonic entities in all the school boards of all the United States of America. Go back to fucking medical school. Man. By putting masks on these kids' face, you can't identify any of them. Voting on this tells me you guys support sex trafficking. The Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, and the Federalist Papers, and also the Bible. And these guarantee my freedom and yours and our children's to breathe Time. oxygen. You dealt with sheep, now prepare yourself to deal with lions. What you've done, you've poked the cubs. And no one's gonna mess with our cubs. And let me tell you something, go home tonight and take one of these spoons and put it on your vaccination spot. Guess what? It's going to stick to you. Are you going to the state and asking where they got their science? If you're going to tell me the CDC, come on, guys. Forcing our children to wear masks is nothing short of psychological child abuse on the altar of wokeness. Do you have any idea what's in a vaccine? E. coli, pig blood, detergent. This is not a joke. There are COVID camps. Concentration camps or something that the Nazis did. Your children and your children's children will be subjugated. They will be asked, have you been a good little Nazi? Hail Fauci! God bless. See ya. There's so much to say about that, but does that shake your belief in democracy at all? No, it doesn't, um, because... Wrong answer. <laughs> you know, I always kind of resist these type of videos that pick out, like, you know, the most outrageous examples of people, obviously, who have... Some of them have maybe active mental health issues. They've fallen down the rabbit hood hole of various conspiracies, etc. Um, and they can be used, they can be weaponized in a very anti-populist way where it's like, can't let these rubes like have a say in government. Don't worry. Let's just trust this select, you know, layer of elites. Dr. Fauci's got this right. Um, so it doesn't because I know how badly the elites have screwed things up and how wrong they've gotten things and how much, you know, they've weaponized lies to serve their own agenda. So, no, it does not. OK, so th we do have uh, disagreements here. So I so there's the Bill Maher line that he always uses, which goes way too far. And his is like the American people are stupid. They're really, really stupid. And that's like that smug elitism that you're referring mm -hmm. to. That goes way too far. Uh, I don't agree with that at all. But then you have the opposite. There are many people on the left who almost like deify and glorify the populace as if they could never be wrong. Right. And I also think that's incorrect. So the way I've always looked at it is like this. I do think that generally speaking, um, Americans are kind of historically uh, ignorant. They don't know as much as they should about the history of this country or civics or any of a number of things. Um, I think in many ways they're factually ignorant. They don't know a lot about science. They don't know a lot about math or whatever. Fill in the blank with any of a number of, of genres and stuff. Um, but when it comes to political issues, their instincts are generally correct. So in other words, you know, the gut instinct, when you, hey, should everybody have health care in the richest country in the world? Everybody's like, oh, yeah, of course, duh. Right. Should everybody be able to go to college? Yeah. Should a minimum wage be a living wage? Yeah. Should we, we be waging a war against Iraq on year number eight, 19 or whatever it is? No. So people's instincts can be correct. So in other words, they can have like common sense while also being really ignorant. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, also the difference between like, do I want to elect any one of those? By the way, one of the p voices you heard there is Madison Cawthorn, who has been elected to yeah, Congress. Right. Mm -hmm. So he is actually an elite. Um, so do I want to elect any one of those people to Congress? No. Um, there are many people in this country who, you know, I think have crazy ideas and would do a terrible job. And that's not like a partisan statement. I don't think that the right has an exclusive hold on those people. But if you look overall, 
Um, the American people at times have gotten things right that the elites have gotten completely wrong. Uh, the wars is, you know, a great point. Like healthcare is a great point in that regard. I mean, just think right now in Washington, what is happening? Democrats have promised to negotiate prescription drug prices for over a decade. It has 90% support in the population and they're probably not going to do it. So that's why I am a little bit always hesitant to um, make too much of these videos because you can always find some person somewhere saying something completely insane. But I do think that it's worth thinking more broadly about questions like, are we more inclined towards conspiracy than other similar countries? Um, what are the sort of like how did we end up in a place where someone would believe something like the spoon's going to sp stick to your vaccination spot and it's got E. coli and pig's blood in it and whatever? Like, what led to a place where a significant chunk of the population could believe things like that? And I keep thinking about this poll, you and I talked about it, um, that found still 30% of Americans believe 9-11 was an inside job. Um, I don't believe that, guys, just for the record. But I think it's very telling and revealing about just how common how common mistrust of every government institution is in America or any like media institution is in America at this point. And some of that is justified. I, so I think both things are true. And that's why this is a messy conversation and a complicated conversation. And there are no easy answers. I think it's definitely true that since the institutions have lied to us repeatedly over and over, people have lost trust in those institutions. And so they, many of them end up turning to hucksters and cranks and yep. people who are just wrong about stuff. There's definitely a conversation to be had there. And a lot of the blame goes there. But also, I think the thing I said before wasn't negated by anything you, you said there, which is that people can generally be pretty ignorant about history and ignorant about science and math and stuff while also having good common sense instincts, which is why, to your point, yeah, of course, I, I would implement a direct democracy system like that. I wish every single state had direct ballot initiatives. One of my favorite policies would be a direct ballot initiative on the federal level, where every time you go to vote for president, every four years, you vote on the top five most important issues. Yeah. Vote on, uh, you know, legalizing marijuana. Vote on uh, minimum wage being $15 an hour. Vote on ending the wars. So at the same time that I have trust in the instincts and the common sense of, of the populace, I also simultaneously believe... A lot of you are ignorant and don't know what you're talking about in a variety of different ways. Now, having said that, well, of course, that this video is just all taking the craziest yeah. of the crazy and throwing them in front of us. Making, yeah, so, it's delicious, so we click on it, and, and it's very entertaining. It's very entertaining. Yeah. So uh, just uh, the other thing I want to say is I think some of that is performative. So in other words, I think some of those people are not – they're mm. acting to get their, their 15 minutes of fame. Do you agree with that? Yes. You, okay, like the one who was screaming. Blah, 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 blah. Yes. That guy was just, he's like, I'm going to get on TV. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. all I think that was. I think so too. I think so too. Or, I mean, there's potential like mental health issues are, you know, rampant in this country and unaddressed. So there could be some of that as well. Um, on the education piece, even that one is kind of complex because it's not like our education system and what kids are taught has been sort of just like a neutral fact finding, like let's just oh, present the not. best information. I mean, that's been systematically sort of intentionally crafted to create a certain level of ignorance about of you know, the realities in the country and who matters in the country. And very specific example of this is, uh, you know, West Virginia, and I think I've talked about this before, but West Virginia storied labor history, the mine wars, this incredibly bloody conflict to unionize miners there, the Battle of Blair Mountain, which there's a little bit of a dispute over this, but they claim is where the term redneck comes from because they tied red bandanas around their neck to recognize who were their brothers in arms. These were workers from, you know, they were the, the sort of white settlers of the region. They were... Um, uh, African-Americans who'd moved up from the South. They were new immigrants all like fighting together. And for decades, for decades, business interests actually got a law passed that you could not teach that history in West Virginia schools. So when you look at, you know, people, let's just use the example of West Virginia. And you're like, how are you ignorant of this? Like, this is your own history. How do you not know these details? There was a systematic effort to keep people from knowing certain of these details and certain parts of our history as well. So even that piece is sort of complex in terms of how you end up with the number of people who have basic ignorance around um, the you know facts of our country and other countries around the world. So true. Um, but I would say 
60 or 70 percent of the blame you could put on the system and the institutions. But I still put like 30 percent of the blame on the individuals because you it, can go and learn those things. They right. are yeah, available. The, to the learn. Internet yeah. exists. You could go online. Mm -hmm. Shows like ours exist. And there's a million shows that are like ours that are generally trying to give people the truth as they see it as yeah. much as possible. Yeah. And then you get a fact like this. Thirty seven percent of Americans can't name any of the rights guaranteed by the First Amendment. That's not just the system. That's your dumbasses watching reruns of Reba and whatever other shows are on. Uh, I was going to say Reno 911, but that was actually kind of funny. That was on Comedy Central. Oh, yeah. What's the I one I was looking for? One. NYPD Blue. What am I living in 2004? I, you, I'm trying to think of shows that I'm, like, I'm blanking on all the shows. Cops. But uh, yeah, people are sitting there watching some bullshit, eating some Cheetos. And I'm not hating because I do the same damn shit. But. Yeah, like some of it is on you as an individual. So on the one hand, it, simultaneously the argument about the system and the institutions is correct, while also just don't use that as an out in every way, shape, and form. Yeah, you know and also, like, as much as you can cherry pick plenty of American ignorance, which is evident, also don't forget that the elites are not only ignorant, they're also arrogant and corrupt. <laughs> well, that that point, that okay. So now we this is a good way to to end this segment too, because we come full circle to our total agreement, yeah. which is the idea that like so to this point, maybe a, some elite would watch this segment and be like, yes, Kyle's with us, <laughs> right? No asshole, you guys are just as bad, if not worse, for the reason you just said, which is not only are you equally as ignorant, but you're also arrogant in thinking you're not ignorant and corrupt. Correct. Is the yes. is the big piece. I exactly mean, that's right. why I still would say, and I think you'd agree with me on this one, I would rather take 535 names pulled from the telephone book 100%. to negotiate this reconciliation bill right Absolutely. now than the, you know, corrupt coal baron Joe Manchin that we have in there. The, the, random, the random 535 didn't take any money from Big Pharma. The random 535 didn't take any money from fo the fossil fuel industry. Right. The 535 didn't take any money from the military industrial complex. And also, like I said, if they're governing solely based off their instincts and their common sense, they're going to make great decisions, which is why you see roughly about 80% of the time when you have a direct ballot initiative, they vote the right way. Yeah. Look, Florida's a perfect example of this. They voted for Trump in the, in the general election and went to Trump over Biden, but they also passed a minimum wage increase with 60%. So what that means is, you know, the, the more you remove the questions from the micro level and you get more macro with it, yes, things start to degrade. But when you get very specific on the individual issues, people are generally spot on. Yes, yes. And that is why, while there are plenty of individuals who you wouldn't want to, like, make king or queen of the country, do I believe in democracy? Yes. Yes, I do. Do I believe more democracy where you have less power vested in the hands of this small layer of corrupt elites. Do I think that would be better in general? Yes, yes, I do. Yeah. Another great example of that is, um, I don't know if you remember that, this back when there was a minimum wage debate going on, now we've decided we're just going to keep the minimum wage at seven twenty five forever, I guess. Remember Tom Cotton and Mitt Romney proposed, like, we're going to have this gradual increase to $10 an hour or something. In Cotton's home state of Arkansas, which is as conservative as they get, I think the minimum wage is already $12 an hour. So he was like proposing, like the elite from the state pretending to represent his people right. mm -hmm. was proposing a wage that was lower than the minimum wage that they already have. So Ridiculous. There you go. Uh, by the way, final, final thing. Uh, don't just do yourself a favor. Whatever point you're trying to make, leave the Nazis out of it. Because it's not like you're not helping your case. Very sometimes it's very rare, but every now and then there is an area where you could bring up a Nazi comparison, and it's like, okay, that's legit. Ninety-eight percent of the time, it ain't it, dog. This is not. This is a good example where it's not it. And the other thing is, the Republican trick of like, do you just call anything you don't like wokeness, and then mm, we win. So that like, was what Madison <laughs> Master said. wokeness. What? There's a pandemic going on. Masks are wokeness. It's got nothing to do with wokeness. It's basic regulation and safety yeah so if you want people to be able to stop wearing the mask then you get know, vaccinated maybe get vaccinated very and simple then we won't be doing that anymore um speaking of elites getting it very catastrophically horribly predatorily criminally wrong and the american people um knowing a lot more of what's going on and being way better behaved <laughs> uh 
financial crisis has shaped everything in this country for decades. It revealed the utter criminality of many of our elites. There were no consequences to be paid. I would contend that's part of how we've ended up with the politics that we have. Um, I would contend that's part of how we end up with people, um, you know, just losing all faith in any sort of institution. And there, you know, because there were no consequences, there were no real lessons learned by Wall Street. And the regulation that was put in place to respond to the financial crisis was relatively, you know, milk toast and toothless. So we're now back in a place where we have potentially, you know, housing prices are going up very rapidly. Is that a bubble or not? Hard to say at the moment. But learning those lessons from the past and how they continue to apply today, I don't think that there is a more in- more important project that we could possibly engage in. So we brought in two filmmakers, Patrick Lovell and Eric Vaughn. They have a new docu-series that just launched. It's called The Con. You and I have both spent a lot of time thinking about and studying the financial crisis and what happened and the way that homeowners got screwed. And I learned a lot from this docu-series and especially it really humanized some of the, the human beings who were just completely defrauded and saw their lives utterly decimated by intentional criminality of people both in their local area, but most importantly on Wall Street. So I'm um, going to talk to Patrick Lovell and Eric Vaughn about their new docu-series, The Con.